On this episode of Living With A Classic, the Jag HE V12. Welcome back to Living With A Classic. If you're new to my channel, I hope that you stuck around and consider subscribing for some great Jaguar and classic car related content every week. So click on my channel down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. You won't miss any updates. In the previous year, I've done a lot of videos on how to work on and how to properly tune the Jaguar V12, specifically the pre-HE with the Bosch Dejectronic fuel injection. I made this video series because when I was getting my pre-HE V12 back on the road, the white one back there, I was having a hard time finding a lot of great information on these engines. A lot of it was just in heavy text form on various old sites or old Bosch manuals. So I wanted to make a video series to make it just a lot easier to go through this. And these videos were really popular with you guys. You guys really seemed to enjoy it. And also you agree with me that it was hard to find information on these engines. But I've also now gotten a lot of requests on to do the same thing on the later HE engines. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna start this video with an overview of the HE engine. As an example to show in this video, I have a 91 HE out of an XJS. The engine is a little bit of a later HE engine because it has the Magneti Marinelli ignition system. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. So I can use it for demonstration purposes, but just be aware that there are some small things that will be a little bit different if you have an earlier HE engine, but I will show those as well. Before we go over to my old workshop to have a look at the XJS and that engine, I thought we'd have a look at the white one quickly, have a look at the pre-HE, the injected one, just real quick overview of it, and then we'll head on over and show what is different on the later HE. Just for fun, here's both of my XJ Series 2 next to each other. The right one is 1977 V12, and the left one is the 1975 XJ6. If you're subscribed to my channel mostly for the V12 videos, I'm sorry there haven't been a lot of them lately. That's also why I'm making today's video, because I've been really trying to get that green 1975 one back on the road as quickly as possible. It's a lot of work taking it apart, fixing that head and putting it back together. And I'm on a little bit of a tight schedule because I have a plan to go on a trip in this car in March and it's the end of January right now. So that's why there've been a lot of six cylinder videos, but I'm gonna try and start with this series and have some V12 videos in the middle as well. So here is that pre-HE and here's an essential aftermarket component. Jaguar cup of coffee. So here's a super quick overview of the pre-HE before we check out the HE. Up on top here, you have your two pressure regulators, then you have a two cold start injectors, two separate fuel rails, which are just connected together. Then you have the crossover pipe there. You have the throttle pedestal in the same place, but the potentiometer under is a little bit different. Crossover pipe is different as well. Down here you have your two sensors, one for the water temperature and one for the air temperature for the ECU. You have a map sensor up here, injection amplifier up here, two relays over there for the ECU, and you have your fuel filter up here in the engine bay. So those are some of the main points you can see when you open the hood to see, do I have an HE, do I have a pre-HE? Not sure how well you can see this on camera, but if you see the spark plugs down there, they're pretty much angled away from the middle. So the front ones are angled to the front and the back ones are angled to the back. That's also a fast way to tell if you have a pre-HE or an HE, because I'll show you on the HE, they're angled in a completely different way. Now let's head on over and check out the XJS. Just a quick thing before we have a look at the engine. This is just a brief overview. I'm not gonna go through everything in detail that would take too long in one video. I will go through everything in future videos, so if there's something you're missing or something you want to see specifically, let me know in the comments down below and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. The HE was introduced in 1981 basically to help with fuel efficiency. It was mostly done with the cylinder heads. The new May cylinder heads had swirl chambers in the cylinder head and that just meant that you could burn a leaner mixture and you can have a higher compression ratio then as well. So these engines have a really high compression ratio and they always run pretty lean. And there's also a lot more going on under the hood as you'll see. One thing that also helped of course is that there's a different rear end ratio on these cars. 
So that did as well help to have low RPM at highway speeds and that also helped with fuel efficiency. They also had O2 sensors, so that also helped so that the engines run optimally when they're up in temperature. There's also various systems that help them warm up faster by changing ignition timing and a few other things. But now, let's have a look at the engine. Let's open the hood on the XJS. And as you can already tell, it looks a lot different. There's a lot more here. So if you're going to look at one of these cars and you've never seen one before, you're going out to buy one and you open the hood, this will look quite scary. The pre-HE looks messy and some people say it looks messier, but I think the HE does look messier. And this is pretty much as messy as it gets because this is a US HE, a late one, has air injection, it has all the bits on it. So this is as bad as it gets. But don't worry, it's not that confusing and I'll go through it. So this will be an overview of what all the parts are and then there'll be later videos where we'll go through all the parts, troubleshooting, just like I did for the pre-HE. But this is just an overview of what everything is. So let's look at what is the same. The intakes, plenums are pretty much the same. This car is modified a little bit, has these cool intakes, which give it a great sound. But otherwise, you'll have the same type of air boxes that we had on the pre-HE. Your fuel rail is just one piece up here, square, goes up over the top. And here are all the injectors down here as well. As you see, there are no cold start injectors. And up here, you don't have the fuel regulators as well. They're over here, one on the incoming and one over here where the fuel goes out. So that's a little different. They're also hooked up into the vacuum system. So they're also vacuum operated. So that's also different. Going up here in the middle, one big thing that you didn't have before is you'll have cruise control. So you have this bellows up here in the middle, it sits a bit above the distributor behind the AC compressor. So that also looks a little different. Like I said, this is a Magneti Marinelli. So you have that cap down there with the two rows around it. And you have your two little coils up here. If you have the Lucas ignition system, you have one coil up here and then one coil up here, which is capped off. So that also looks a little weird. Your crossover pipe is a lot bigger and a little thicker. And it connects differently up here connects on the back of the intakes here on both sides and connection is a lot bigger. On the pre-HE, it just goes under and it connects with a hose up here under with a really thick, thin hose. It's just about the size of my finger up there. So this is a lot better crossover pipe. So on the HE, setting the throttle discs is very important, but it's extremely important on the pre-HE just because the crossover pipe is not thick enough to handle imbalance. An imbalance on an HE is not as bad, but of course you should still set them. If you don't know how to set them, I'll put a link to up above because I've already gone through that on another engine. One other thing that was changed and brought back from the early carved engine is the coolant crossover pipe here now has a cap in the middle as well, which I think is a lot better system because on the pre-HE that's gone and you can only fill from that side and burp up there so this is just a lot easier to get the air out of these however this can be retrofitted to your pre-HE if you want to so that's a good upgrade to get one of these from an HE engine relays up top have been moved as well some are to the side some are up there and some are in the car instead I think that's better as well one of the reasons this engine looks a little more messier is this is a California car with all of the smog stuff so it does have the air injection up here and the pump is over there. This can of course be removed if you want to. Basically just pumps air into exhaust ports to get a cleaner burn and less emissions out the back. These can be plugged if you want to and you can remove this. That pump can be removed as well. And you can put the alternator up there as well if you want to to have easier access to it. That's a common upgrade that some people do. If you live in a place where you don't need to have your car checked for emissions. If you do, all has to be in place and needs to be working. But if you live somewhere where you don't need it, you can definitely remove it. So another thing that's a little different is the throttle pedestal. On the other one, the uh, 
potentiometer down there. Well, basically on the HE, it's a potentiometer. So it's more like a throttle position sensor. On the pre-HE, it can only tell if the throttle is closed. So if you're idling, if you're at full uh, load on the US ones, and then on them as well, it can tell how fast you're accelerating and that will give an extra burst of fuel into the engine. But that's not the same on the HE. So this is just a throttle position sensor. Full load is done by this vacuum switch over here. So that's separate and a little different. On the pre-HE, you had the injection amplifier up there. You have a similar thing on the HE. It's a resistor pack over here, which basically does the same job as that amplifier and controls the signal to the injection system. One last difference is there's a lot more vacuum lines on this engine than the earlier ones. There's a few you can see up here, some over there, some valves down there, the full load switch over there that we already talked about. But I will make a separate video on that as well because there's a lot of them and they can leak in various places and your engine won't run right if they're missing or if they're leaking. They all need to be present and everything needs to work. But I'll go through that in a separate video. And that's basically it for an overview of the HE. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any parts that you specifically want to see in future videos, and I'll try and get to cover all of them as soon as I can. And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed, I highly recommend that you do so you don't miss any future videos on the HE engine. Until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living with a Classic. I'll see you soon.